What's up, y'all? This video is about the Craftsman T225 riding lawn mower. I've had this mower just a little over two years now, so I'm going to give you a comprehensive review. We're going to talk about the details and specifications of the mower, and then I'm going to regale you with some of the trials and tribulations I've experienced while owning this mower. So let's go ahead and look at it up close, but first you can see just to scale that it is not that large of a mower. It's a fairly traditional design and really just about the right size for maybe a couple of acres. I myself have around five and it's done the job decently for me. So let's take a look at it up close and check out some of the specifications and details. And then we'll be back and talk about overall my impressions of the mower. Okay, we'll do a quick walk around of the mower here. You can see it does have two front headlights which tend to be as bright or dim as the throttle is running. Here is your deck height adjustment and your PTO engagement lever. Down here you can see it does have a 46 inch deck. The seat does have a sensor where if you were to come off the seat, the mower would turn off. It will not run unless somebody's sitting on the seat or the parking brake is engaged. Seat lifts up, revealing the battery. Two springs for the seat. And then there's this little bracket that holds in the battery. Here we have two compartments. One is a beer or beverage holder and the other one is probably just about the right size to put your phone, maybe a rag or a towel or something. This is the parking brake. If you press all the way down, press on this lever, the parking brake will stay down and engaged. Here is the gas cap where you fill the gasoline for the tank. Here are the controls, the throttle, and the disengage for the parking brake, or the engage for the parking brake, and the key switch. There is an hour meter, which also indicates if you have a low battery. Lifting up the engine cover reveals the Briggs & Stratton 19 horsepower 540 cc motor. So the motor itself is air-cooled vertical shaft one cylinder gasoline motor. It's 19 horsepower and 14.2 kilowatt. The starter is electric with the starter volts being 12. The transmission which you cannot see is a tough torque K46 and it is a belt-driven hydrostatic transmission with infinite forward and reverse gearing. The front tires are 15 by 66 and the rears are 20 by 88. It is a four by two, two-wheel drive, manual steering. Independent PTO and manual clutch. It has a three gallon fuel tank, 12 volt battery, which I do have an extra sitting around here somewhere that I purchased during my troubleshooting period, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Okay, so now we've seen this mower up close and looked at all the details. And now I'm gonna tell you about my experience with this mower over the last couple of years and its overall performance. Before I get into that, full disclaimer, I ordered this mower from Amazon and had it delivered via ABF freight, which I've never ordered anything that big from Amazon before, but I figured why not? It was a decent price, uh, shipping was factored in, so I went ahead and did it. I have to say my experience with ABF was flawless and perfect. The delivery happened way before the scheduled delivery date. The guy, the driver was very friendly. He dropped it off right at my gate, right at the spot where I asked him to drop it. And upon inspection of the mower, it was in perfect condition, uh, no damage whatsoever. 
So I went ahead and proceeded to uncrate the mower and remove it from the pallet. A little bit of a challenge being that I was by myself and I didn't have all my tools because they weren't delivered yet because they had recently moved. But I got it open and I got it off the pallet and I got it going. So a couple initial things to get it going. Of course, you have to disconnect the, or excuse me, connect the battery. This little guy right here is held up with the bracket. So you have to take off to release it, put the uh, shield down. So went through all the motions, got some gas in it, fired it up and it cranked right up. Good to go. So uh, initially really good looking mower. So. I went ahead and commenced to mowing five acres and was as happy as a kid at Christmas. Two weeks went by and I decided it was time to mow again. So went out, started right up, got through about three acres and it just went <laughs> died on me. Went to turn it over again, just <laughs> uh, it would turn over with no problems but would not fire up. Tried over and over and over again. Um, I was hot, I was sweaty, it's really hot. I'm a little sweaty right now, it's like 100 degrees down here in the south. Um, after numerous attempts, I decided I was gonna give up for the day. It was gonna rain, so I went in the garage, got a tarp, threw it over it, went inside the house. Decided I wasn't gonna deal with it for a couple of weeks. You know, I had some stress at work and stuff and was dealing with other stuff. Finally, I got around to going out and messing around with it again went out, it started right up. So ran for about 30 seconds, died again. It sounded a lot like it was running out of fuel, but it had plenty of fuel. Checked the air filter, it was good to go. Pulled the spark plug, it wasn't fouled. Uh, it was gapped decently. Pulled the line down to the fuel filter, past the fuel filter, everything appeared to have fuel. So it just did not make any sense. These are simple mowers. You know, I'm not an idiot when it comes to small engines. They're pretty basic. Air, fuel, spark, what, I'm not, what am I not getting? Usually you could diagnose the problem, but I just could not get it. Uh, I did a spark test. I connected the spark plug and ran it to the frame. I was getting a spark. Nothing made sense. After being out there all day, messing with it out there, I had checked all the basics. I didn't know where to go from there. So I figured I'm gonna get it up in the garage to really look at it up close. So these things are a little bit of pain and I was downhill, but there is a disconnect here that if you pull it, it disconnects the axle and then you can just basically push it. So that whole thing was uh, uphill. So got a little bit of an ass workout that day. At that point, I called Craftsman. My experience with Craftsman leave little to be desired, to say the least. Basically, they told me I had to get it to into one of two shops in town. Neither one of those shops, that which were authorized to do Craftsman warranty work, would come and pick it up. They seemed annoyed that I even called to even inquire about it. So, needless to say, I was very frustrated. I kept on calling craftsmen. They kept on telling me to do the same thing. Uh, those guys at those shops would not come and pick it up. I didn't have a trailer to drop it off at the time and I wasn't about to pay to do so. Finally, after several calls to craftsmen and after several calls to Amazon, they resolved to fully refund my money. So I got my money back. Got my money back. Whoa, sorry, that was a big B. I got my money back and I still had the mower, but I had an in-op mower. <laughs> I have a giant paperweight, so not very happy. Got my money back at least, so after that whole saga all through the summer, it was about maybe August, September at that point, so I just kind of let it sit, satisfied that I got my money back. The grass stops growing around September, October here, it doesn't really grow till the next spring, so I just sat there for the winter. The following spring, I took the carburetor apart. I just took it all apart, cleaned it all out, uh, drained everything out of it, and cleaned it up, put it back together, got some fuel in it, took a little bit of um, effort to get the carburetor to fill up and a little bit of starting fluid, and I got it to fire up. Once I got it fired up, it worked. I mowed the whole property, no problem. 
Went and parked it, sat for a couple of weeks, went to go mow again. Wouldn't work. So uh, at that point, as you can imagine, I am very frustrated. Uh, I'm out no money, but I am out a whole year of frustration and my yard and property not looking as good as it could. I didn't want to pay for another mower. I didn't want to pay for anybody to come and mow the property. And I wasn't mowing this whole property with a walk mower. I tell you that much. So the neighbor lady turned me on that there was a guy in the neighborhood that actually owned a small engine repair shop. And he actually agreed to come pick it up, put it on his trailer, took it to the shop. And he basically did the same thing I did the year before, took apart the fuel system, put it back together, and then it worked. So I'm not quite getting it at this point, what exactly the problem is, what's coming up. Um, it's still acting up a little bit now but first i got to complete the saga because after that couple of times mowing that year it sat through the winter again all the way the next spring bringing us up to current year this spring this spring i go out to start it up guess what no starty go in the house to get a drink come back out and smell a very strong fuel smell and I see gas just pouring out of the mower. My entire garage is flooded with gas. Pulled the axle disconnect, push it outside to actually right here in the driveway and just let it drain out. So long story short there, I took the carburetor apart. As you can imagine, I had to drain, pull the hose and drain the tank and everything. Took the carburetor apart and what I discovered, so we have a new issue now because it's never flooded and poured out before. What I discovered was at the bottom of the carburetor bowl was the distinct imprint shape of the float. And there was gunk in that shape. So what had happened is gunk had built up in the bottom of the carburetor bowl and the float got stuck to the bottom. And so basically it wasn't going up with the level of gas as a float is intended to do, shutting off the needle valve, allowing fuel into the uh, carburetor bowl, and it basically flooded the whole system. It kept on pouring in and rising up and filling everything. It filled up the combustion chamber, it filled up the entire fuel system, all the way up to the point where it was actually pouring out of the air intake, which was lower than the level of the fuel in the fuel tank, so it was all gravity. Needless to say, I yanked the hose, allowed the rest of the tank to drain into a gas can, and then I just pulled everything. Pulled all the fuel system out, I pulled the spark plugs out, the combustion chamber was full of fuel, everything was just full of fuel, the muffler was full of fuel, and I had to infer that some fuel must have leaked past the rings into the crankcase into the oil as well, so an oil change is warranted. Pushed it way out in the driveway, let it completely dry out for hours, and then what I did was, once I got it all cleaned up, I got it all back together, I went in the house, got my fire extinguisher for obvious reasons, came out, and after some cranking, filling up the fuel and the carburetor bowl and everything, it did start up. That was about three months ago, and it has been running since then. It has not been running well. You can see right now, So that was me actuating the throttle all the way down and all the way back up. This throttle is set up where the bottom is turtle, the top is rabbit, and the very top actuates the choke. It barely changes um, at all with the actuation of the throttle. So even though it'll mow, it doesn't get the high enough revolutions where it can mow very efficiently. It still gets enough power to engage the PTO and will mow, but not as desired. So the performance is suffering, although having a working mower is still in a better position than I've been in the last two years. The last three months have actually been pretty decent, being as that I did get my money back and the mower has been working, not optimally. So that's where I'm at. I don't know why it doesn't have full power, maybe in all the times that the carburetor 
and the fuel system got taken apart. Maybe some of the strings or the rods got uh, stretched out or bent in just the wrong way, but it's just not performing optimally, but it's doing the job. So that's basically the overall saga of the Craftsman T225 riding lawnmower thus far. Really, it's been a total pain in the ass. Uh, I'm glad it works now. I'm glad it runs. It's a good looking mower. Uh, it says it's made in the USA with global materials. So is it really made in the USA? Overall, that's my honest review of the Craftsman T225 riding lawnmower. I'd really like to know if anybody else out there has experienced these issues with this mower or similar issues with another mower and Craftsman T-Series riding lawnmowers. Is it something with this particular 540cc Craftsman Briggs & Stratton engine? Is it something with the carburetor or the linkage with these mowers or these engines? I don't know what's gonna happen next, but I'm probably gonna start replacing some of the carburetor linkage. If that doesn't work, maybe I'll try the carburetor itself and we'll keep going and keep working on it and see if there's anything we can do to get this thing to run the way it should. If you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comment section. Like and subscribe. I'll definitely come back and report if there's any further developments with this mower if you're interested. Well, that's all I got today, guys. Until next time, take it easy.